Hello again, witches, seekers, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and wand waving. I'm your host, Paige, and together we're going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, the natural world, and most importantly, living through a fucking pandemic. So hey, witches, hello, and thank you so much for tuning into today's episode, which is episode 69, and I give you full permission to totally giggle over it, especially because really the only topic I can talk about right now is solitude, (laughs) quarantine, being alone. Um, I want to thank you all for being really super patient while I got new episodes going. I especially want to thank my advertisers. The month of April was was a lot. (laughs) I'm sure it was difficult for a lot of you too, for a lot of reasons. I moved at the beginning of April. This was a scary time to move. Um, and I moved to a place that I I was kind of uncomfortable in at first. I'm still a little uncomfortable. It's an apartment building. I'm used to living in a house, right? But I had to move and I, (laughs) people who take antidepressants often go through this weird phase where we get this idea that we can just get off our medication. Like everything's fine. We can get off the medication. Maybe we could try some natural supplements. And that happened to me. And so for the entire month of April, I was pretty much just indisposed. Um, So thank you to the advertisers who've been really patient. I didn't give them a heads up that I was freaking out. So Wild Magic and BetterHelp have both been, you know, really, really nice about me um, missing a few episodes and rescheduling. And you guys have all been really nice about it too. You know, I've been getting questions like, just want to make sure you're okay. You know, I saw that you're not putting out an episode. I hope this isn't the end of the podcast. And it's absolutely not. The reason why it took me so long to get one out is, well, I did what I always do when I'm I'm overwhelmed. You know, I, I tried to just push everything away for a minute and make everything stop. But things don't just stop, you know, they keep going, whether you're there to deal with them or not. And then it just becomes a bigger problem. Of course. So fortunately, um, I am doing a lot better now. After talking with some of the members of the witch and bitch and tell them that I was going off my medication and trying natural supplements, they were all like, you know, (laughs) we just want to make sure that this is like the right decision and like, are you sure? And a few days later, I realized that they were right. And I was totally just, just losing it. Right. And they were right. I I had just kind of lost sight of myself and what was important. So I'm, I'm feeling a whole lot better now. I'm much more comfortable in my new place. It's an apartment in an apartment building. And it's, that's very, very new, very difficult for me. But I like my apartment itself, and I'm really getting the hang of living in a new place. For someone with like agoraphobia, social anxiety, moving to a new place is a very scary experience. And when you add in the kind of uh, general fear and anxiety about uh, the coronavirus and, and the pandemic, it was just, it was a very, very challenging experience. Like I, I'm no longer talking to my dad and I haven't for over a month just because of some fallout. I haven't been able to see my friends. I haven't been able to have anyone in my new apartment. Um, and that's pretty hard. You know, I'm someone who likes to, I spend a lot of time at home. I've been working from home for years. So I spend a lot of time at home. And one of the things that made that a little bit easier is that people were willing to come to me. You know, they were willing to let my place be the hangout place. And that's no longer really possible. (laughs) So I've been spending even more time alone. And in a new place. And for the last few months, while I was, you know, waiting to move, a lot of my witchy stuff, my witchcraft supplies, the stuff I use regularly, that was packed up. Because I really wanted to make sure that it was packed properly. And that anyone who moved it couldn't break anything in it, you know. Um, So I packed it up kind of early. And throughout the month of April, I just, I wasn't doing anything witchy. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really casting any spells. I wasn't um, doing any rituals. The only magical thing I was really doing was using magical cleaning supplies, like Florida water, Chinese wash, you know, new place, burning incense, that kind of thing. So when I started to 
you know, realize I'd kind of fucked up and that my life was spiraling out of control, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I decided to get a little bit, use magic as a way to, to focus, right? I was going to focus a little bit on magic, just, just something every day. And so I started a couple of projects and I started doing more things like exploring the tarot because of my, um, my overall kind of depression and anxiety in April, I just was not able to do any of my professional tarot readings. And I felt so bad. You know, I had to refund all of these tarot readings. I think it was seven different orders that I had to refund. And I just felt like such a clod about it. Just so awful. I just could not get anything from tarot cards. But within minutes of sending out the apology emails and, you know, making a coupon code for people, just making sure that, you know, all of those people knew how sorry I was. Within minutes, I had like three emails from people saying, oh my God, it's okay. You know, I'm actually really glad because I was thinking about you. I was wondering. It's been a little while. Um, you know, I hope you feel better. I totally understand. Thank you for the refund. And in the future, when you open back up, I'd love if you'd let me know and maybe I'll get a reading then. And this like very simple act of understanding and kindness. Uh, oh my God, like I can't explain what it did. Just all of that. Well, not all of it, but a big amount of that, that, that overwhelm, that fear just instantly melted away. And I remembered, um, I remembered what it is I get out of this podcast that is so, so valuable to me. And I mean, some of that's money for sure. I wouldn't be able to have my apartment without it, but, but the greatest value in this podcast has always been, um, the community of witches that I have found or built or whatever through my work as the fat feminist witch. You guys really are what keeps me going. You know, you guys are my my sounding board for not just witchcraft, but also for things like compassion, how to treat other people, how to make the world a better place. So I, I really did miss doing podcast episodes, you know, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get into <laughs> an entire podcast episode that was structured and researched all about solitude. I just couldn't do that. It seemed, I don't know. You guys know what solitude is like. A lot of you are living in it now. And if not, you're out in the world where there's all sorts of different anxieties. You know, if you're still working, if you live in a house with a lot of people, it's, it's a whole different level of, you know, anxiety or issue or overwhelm that we're all dealing with. And I thought sitting here and preaching to you guys about how great it is to be living in solitude, it just seemed, um, not very authentic to what I was feeling. Though I love being alone. <laughs> this has been hard. I'm much more alone than usual. And on top of that, you know, I spend all my time alone in the house, but I, I watch the world continue to move outside. You know what I mean? And now it feels like a lot of things are just stuck. The entirety of 2020 feels like the hangman car. <laughs> I just, I feel like I'm suspended in this very odd place. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, preach about the benefits of solitude. I did write a, a blog post on my website on the fatfeministwitch.com about different goddesses of solitude and different um, lessons that we can learn from their stories and the solitude that they experienced and how they came out of it. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm pretty proud of that post, actually. I, uh, I really enjoyed writing it. I think it was the first thing I did when I was like, all right, I got to get back into this. Now the little magic stuff that I'm doing. So last year, you know, after I talked to Kathleen Borealis, the geologist, can you guys hear the rain picking up? Mm -hmm. 
So this is normally not something that I would admit, but I am actually filming this on Thursday, March, or May, <laughs> Thursday, May 14th, which is when it's going to come out. Like I'm, I'm probably going to put it out <laughs> within an hour and a half of finishing my recording and editing. It's going to be going out. So that's fun. It's real time, y'all, real time. But after I talked to Kathleen Borealis, the geologist, and thought a lot about crystals and about where they come from, and I looked at my crystal collection because I was packing it all up, I realized how many crystals I have that I, I never really used. I buy crystals, sometimes it's based on how pretty they are, but a lot of times it's based on that little card that comes with them that, that tells you all of their, their purposes, right? I'll pick up a stone that I'm just drawn to, and then I look up all of its uses, and they all are, you know, whatever it is I need at the time, almost always. And that had happened a lot. You know, I had bought all of these crystals for these specific purposes and these issues that I was dealing with and to help me with certain things, and then never used them and just kept buying more crystals. And that's just when I really thought about it. Um, that's just not really who I am and what I'm about. You know what? I'm not really about the consumerism of witchcraft. I love buying witchy things, especially from, you know, independent witches. I love buying tarot decks from the person who created it. I love buying candles from the person who poured the candle. You know, I love that. But that's not entirely what witchcraft is about, right? It's not about the stuff you buy. It's not about buying stuff at all or accumulating stuff. It's, it's about energy. And there was all this energy sitting in this box of crystals that I had never even tried to tap into. So for the last few weeks, that's what I've been doing. Every week I pick a crystal. And for that week, that's the crystal I grab any time that I would normally grab something. I haven't really been using any other crystals. Maybe my kind of standard ones are still out. You know, my pyrite is still sitting on my desk and my galaxy wand is still right next to my bed. Sometimes I just kind of end up holding it, stuff like that. But I started picking crystals that were in my box that I liked, that I had never used. And I started intuitively choosing them, researching their properties, and then finding ways to use them throughout the week. And again, you guys can find this on my website. I started with green calcite which was really great for like a very chill meditation type stone. And then I went in kind of an opposite direction. You know, my energy was starting to come up and I went with petersite, which is known as the tempest stone. So it's got this very stormy energy. In all that week, um, I had a lot of energy and a lot of creative energy, uh, especially. So I got a lot of really cool creative stuff done. I got a lot of business stuff done, a lot of things associated with Jupiter energy. Peter's site is associated with Sagittarius, which is uh, ruled by Jupiter. And the stone itself really does look like those images that NASA have been uploading of the surface of Jupiter. I'm obsessed with the surface of Jupiter. I just think it's so beautiful. Um, so I've actually been working on a piece of artwork that is, you know, dedicated to Jupiter. And it was such a great I loved the Peter site. It was a great experience. And the next crystal that I chose was actually very similar, but it had slightly different properties. So the next crystal, the one I'm using right now, is Numite. Numite, like Peter site, is associated with things like storms, the tempest, right? It's associated with that same strong energy, but it's it's more of a root chakra crystal. It's very, very grounding. And so I've been finding a lot of um, strength from that stone and still willing to explore these spiritual and philosophical topics. Jupiter and Sagittarius, it's very, you know, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very industrious sign and planet. You know, it's our planet of, of money, of finances, but it's also a planet of expansion and philosophy and, you know, interest in religion and culture and traveling. So I found a lot of um, those vibes present with the Peter site. And with the new might, I'm just feeling much more grounded. I'm finding ways to put that energy 
into something more than just a project that I'm flitting through, right? So I'm really loving that. The first day I was really using the new mite, I woke up that day and I, I actually put it on. I have, I uh, put it on a necklace and I found myself kind of obsessed with tending to my plants and caring for my pets. Just, and I mean, that's stuff I do anyways, but that day it was serious. I started replanting plants. I started moving them around the apartment. I started finding them better sunlight. I did a whole bunch of research about the best grow conditions for the plants. I switched over my fish's tank and I did a bunch of research about on him and making sure that he's got everything. I ended up buying a few things on Amazon, of course, because that's how we roll. Um, you know, the cat got all new food because his was just not He just wasn't the healthiest he could be. And so I had to go get him new food. And Numite is a stone that is associated with with all of the elements because it is very, very tied to earth energy. And I was just in this place where I really needed to interact with the earth that first day. In the apartment building that I now live in, um, my windows just face other walls and windows. It faces a courtyard, but when I say courtyard, you picture something that's way nicer than what it is. It's really just kind of a hole in the middle of the building so that those of us in these apartments have windows, right? (laughs) So I can't see birds. I can't see trees. I can't really see anything. I can see the sky, but that's about it. So getting my hands into the dirt and you know, I stuck my face in there and I was sniffing all the plants that I just ordered because I I bought a bunch of witchy plants this year, you know, a couple months back. And it's just, it was really what I needed. It was really, really what I needed. And I noticed, you know, just how strong that need was to spend time with nature, even though I, I can't see it from the windows. And it's not always safe to go out and experience it. There's a nice park nearby. But since the weather got nice, that park is pretty full. (laughs) I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but um, I have had chronic bronchitis since I was in high school. Thank you to everyone who smokes cigarettes around me, by the way. Uh, (laughs) Because that's what makes it really flare up. But um, so my lungs are not in super great shape. And I don't care for them as well as I should right now anyways, let's be real. So the thought of catching COVID-19 and having some permanent lung damage has been uh, just a little bit scary. Just a little bit scary. <laughs> right? So I'm uh, I'm even a little more afraid to go out. I'm sure that's pretty common. Um, at first I was like, ha ha ha. Everybody who goes outside is like, I'm super prepared for this pandemic. And it turns out all of that safety net stuff I had set up <laughs> because I don't want to leave the house. Like, grocery delivery, all of that just became like inaccessible to me. I couldn't get anything (laughs) delivered and I had to leave the house more. Ah. So (laughs) I thought thought my agoraphobia slash social anxiety would be like a boon. (laughs) It's, It's turns out I'm just as afraid as everyone else. It's almost a little nice to find out I'm normal. So I've been exploring the crystals. After I had to refund all of those those tarot readings, I was like, oh, I just feel like the worst. How can I make the best of this time where I'm not taking on any reading clients right now? So I started reading Pathworking the Tarot by Lisa Robertson and exploring each tarot card um, deeper, exploring the cards that come up intuitively for me um, in certain situations deeper. And what I found over the last, you know, few weeks, almost a month now, is that my knowledge of tarot has gone to a whole new place. I find myself reaching for any sort of book a lot less. I'm getting more out of the symbolism of each card. I'm able to associate those cards with real world situations even better than I was before. So when I am able to take on reading clients again in the future, I know that I will be a much better reader because my own readings have been coming through so much clearer lately. 
I can't do a very long reading. <laughs> Anything more than three or four cards and my brain just completely fizzles out. But I'm grateful that I uh, I found Pathworking the Tarot. Or that Llewellyn sent it to me. <laughs> Realistically, they sent it to me. Um, that will be getting a review very soon. As soon as I'm, you know, done making my way through it. It's not just one I'm reading, it's one I'm working through. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But that one will be getting a review shortly. If you want to explore the tarot, you want to learn about these tarot cards, and you want to do self-exploration with your tarot and like some journaling and stuff, I highly recommend checking it out. It's not a very large book. It won't cost you a whole lot of money. So even without the review, I'm pretty confident saying that you will definitely get some value if you're trying to learn about the tarot from that book. Another book I read, and which I recently reviewed, so you can find that at fatfeministwitch.com, was the re-release of Utterly Wicked by Dorothy Morrison. Now, this book originally came out in, I believe it was 2007. It was a while ago. And it's all about um, curses, hexes, baneful magic. This is not something that a lot of modern witches will talk about or touch on you know, forever, there's always been that warning, don't even try it. This book, you know, it first of all, it doesn't do that. But this book goes through hexes, curses, um, all of those magical practices that kind of freak out modern witches, and where quite a few of them come from. So it's full of spells that are ready for you to use that tell you all of the ingredients you know it explains how to create some ingredients things like hot foot powder which is used to get people to go away from you or to not come back lots of different banishing and protection but also things like you know cursing an abuser cursing your ex you know everyone wants to hex the ex once but <laughs> cursing an abuser cursing um you know, your boss at a terrible job, dealing out justice through magic. I really liked it. I have been trying to get my hands on a copy of the original version of Utterly Wicked for a while. It's been it's been out of print. It was not put out by, by one of our big um, publishers that we're used to seeing all the time. But this re-release was put out by Wiser, whom I, like, absolutely adore. I, I love almost everything they've been putting out in the years that I've been doing this podcast, Wiser has become just uh, just one of my favorite publishers. Um, but they put out, they re-put out Utterly Wicked. And so I was really excited to read it. I did find that a lot of it was, I don't know how many changes have been made in the re-release. I'm not sure, because I never got to read the old one. But some of it did feel outdated. Some of it did feel like it was written in 2007. And, and things have just changed by now. But knowing that this book is a little bit older made that a little bit easier for me to deal with. I remember what books were like in 2007. I remember how things were written. And I've read other Dorothy Morrison books from around the same time. So it's it really falls in line with all of that. I gave it four out of five crystal balls for that kind of reason. And I still highly recommend it. If you've ever wanted to learn about any sort of curses or hexes or baneful magic, this is really the only book I know of that I could really recommend to anybody. I've never found another book that's specifically about this stuff um, that doesn't rely on some really hard stereotypes and, and tropes and stuff like that. Another problem I had with this book, well, it's not a problem. It's just something that I felt I would have liked to see in the book was that a lot of the curses, the spells were very individual. So they were for dealing with your personal and individual issues. I would have loved to see more that dealt with wider issues, you know, cursing entire systems or large organizations or mass curses and hexes that you, you do with other witches. You know, I would have just, I would have really liked to see stuff like that added into the book, just because I think that's what people need now, I think that is one of the best ways we can use baneful magic now is to write a lot of very big wrongs <laughs> out there versus these these kind of tiny ones. 
So hopefully I will be finding more books on curses and hexes that I can read and do some research on in the future. If you guys know of any, I would love it if you would let me know on social media. Let me know. I'm the fat feminist witch almost everywhere. So I would love your book recommendations. So we're going to do a little business here in a minute. I'm, I'm going to play you some ad, some ads, but I just want to take another minute to thank my advertisers for being very understanding with my issues. Now I'm not surprised they were so understanding. Wild magic is a beautiful, it, it's a small company run by one witch who is super, super cool super supportive. Wild Magic is just, it's fantastic. I'm loving the products that they sent me. Absolutely loving the gratitude spray I use literally every single day in my apartment and as a body spray. It's fantastic. And BetterHelp, of course, um, is the online counseling program. Online counseling can save your life right now. If you are struggling and you need someone to talk to and you cannot get a hold of a therapist or find or find counseling that is safe for you to attend, I really urge you to try a service like BetterHelp. And when you listen to the ad coming up, you'll hear that there is a, a discount code so that those of you who need it can get it for a price that you can actually afford. So thank you to my advertisers and for all of you for being patient and listening. Over the last three years, I've shared a lot about my ongoing journey to better mental health. And I get messages all the time from listeners who are also struggling and looking for someone to talk to. Unfortunately, it can be very difficult to find therapy that is fully accessible, financially or otherwise. That's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is an online service that can connect you with real licensed counselors who can be available on your schedule and right where you are. With four different ways to communicate and a wide range of specialties, there's a good chance you can find someone perfect for you all without leaving home. Everything is confidential, and if you ever feel like your counselor isn't the right fit for you, you can switch right away. Not only is the service really affordable compared to in-person therapy, they also offer financial aid for those who need it. It's okay to need help. You deserve to get better. And you can start that journey at betterhelp.com slash fatfeministwitch and save 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash fatfeministwitch. Wild Magic grew out of a fascination for herbalism, a love of witchcraft, and a passion for creating natural, chemical-free products that honor our bodies and the earth. All items are handmade by Clarissa Camp with you and Mother Earth in mind. Made with love, purpose, and a sprinkle of magic, we craft intentional products for mindful witches who have a profound relationship with the planet. Our ritual bath salts and sprays are crafted with herbal and mineral ingredients to support your magical intentions, cleanse your sacred space, provide protective barriers, or just bring a beautiful chemical-free scent to your body or your home. So visit our website to learn more and check out our herbal infused body butters, lip balms, and healing salves. Because right now, listeners of the Fat Feminist Witch podcast can get 20% off by going to thewildmagic.com slash fatfeministwitch and entering promo code fatfemwitch20 at checkout. So thank you again to my advertisers. If you have a witchy business or something that you think might help out the Fat Feminist Witch audience, please go to advertisecast.com slash Fat Feminist Witch to look at pricing and maybe get your own ad here on the podcast. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, here is what I really wanted to talk about today, which is why I'm putting a podcast episode out today. Next week, May 21st, that will be episode 70. And what I've decided to do is to make an episode that is all about exactly what you guys want to know. So it's going to be an episode called Ask the Fat Feminist Witch. And I want you guys to submit questions. These can be questions about witchcraft, about creating your practice, about specific elements like crystals or tarot. It can be, you know, looking for book recommendations. It can be about podcasting. It can be about me. It can be about absolutely anything related to the show here. So go to my website, thefatfeministwitch.com, 
And right near the top of the page, you will see Ask a Fat Feminist Witch, Submit Questions. Like I said, you can submit any question you like. It can be any length you want. If I decide to use it in the show, I will send you an email back and let you know so that you can tune in and hear the answer to your question. Not only do I think that that will be super fun, but it will give me a really good idea of what kind of topics you guys want to hear on the Fat Feminist Witch on a regular basis. I've accepted that what I thought 2020 would be has completely changed. And so a lot of the plans that I had for this year, I just, they just don't feel, I don't know, appropriate anymore. 2020 is so much different than I thought it would be. And I mean, I knew something wild was going to happen. Every astrologer has been like, watch out for 2020, something crazy is going to happen. And they were right. But it started off on such a high note with my, my first book coming out that I just thought there was nothing that could happen that could bring me down. But a global pandemic and thousands of people dying, I guess is a really good reason to get bummed out. <laughs> so I would love your input. I would love to answer your questions and I would love to make sure that during this time, you guys have the tools that you need to use witchcraft to your advantage, to make things easier, to make things better, to create change in your personal lives and in our wider lives, you know, in on a societal level. I'm going to make sure that I'm giving you guys all the magical tools you need to do that kind of stuff. So go to the fatfeministwitch.com and submit a question for next week's episode, which is going to be on Thursday, May 21st. In the meantime, I'll be updating the website with blog posts, with book reviews, with my Magic Rock Mondays project, you know, where I, I choose a new crystal every week. As I said this week, it's been new might, and I'm pretty excited to up update you guys on Monday about it because I've had some really cool experiences with it so far. So check all of that out on my website. I'm still active on social media. I'm trying to share pictures of the magical plants that I have and, and any sort of witchy project that I'm working on. So you can always find updates there. I'm hoping that those of you who have been very worried that the podcast might not be coming back feel a little bit better now. I'm definitely still doing the podcast. I just needed a little bit of time to reassess the direction of the show and make sure that I was in the, the best place possible to be able to make great episodes for you guys. So thank you so much to everyone for tuning in today. Today's episode was a little bit short. It's a little, just an update. Tune in next week, Thursday, May 21st, for a full episode where I answer all of your questions about witchcraft, about magic, about podcasting, feminism, social justice, and anything else that you might witches, you witches might feel you need in this very wacky time in history. If you want to support the podcast, you can do that by going to my website and clicking the button that says buy me a coffee. You can also join the Witch and Bitch, which is my private monthly membership group through Patreon. So that's patreon.com slash the fat feminist witch. And in our private monthly membership group, we have weekly live meetups. We read books together. We discuss all sorts of witchy topics. And mostly it's just a way that we can all stay connected with each other and have ways to explore witchcraft with other people in a safe way. You can always find me across social media on my website if you ever want to find out more about me and about the Fat Feminist Witch podcast. I hope you all have a very fantastic week. I cannot wait to answer your questions next week on the 21st. And thank you all so much for checking in, for asking about the show and about me and about how I'm doing, and for connecting with me in various ways across social media. It really has helped me feel a lot less alone. So thank you to everyone for that and to my lovely advertisers and for everyone listening right now. 
You're all wonderful. And I am very grateful to have the entire Fat Feminist Witch, you know, family in my life.